Howdy everybody, Cub here. Welcome to episode 215 of the Let's Play. Today guys, we are out at the arena, and we're going to do a special battle today. Uh, on Friday, I actually did a bunch of battles during a live stream. I'll provide a link to that live stream in the description if you want to watch it. We did a lot of cool stuff. And I'll show you some of the stuff we did here, actually, uh, because we actually improved this arena quite a bit. Uh, so you see, first of all, I am invisible right now, which is why these zombies are not seeing me. We got about 25 of these guys here right now. And so, yeah, we're going to battle these guys. Uh, not ourselves, but we're going to have the golems battle them. And I've actually improved this golem uh, creation area here. So you see we now have more dispensers here. And so now this thing can spawn six golems instead of two. Uh, so before it could only spawn two golems, but now it can spawn six. And the reason is because we changed up how this redstone works back here. You see now we got this little torch tower uh, going into this repeater and this repeater basically powers all of these dispensers. So I'm just now going to go ahead and put some pumpkins into each and every one of these dispensers here. So let's just go ahead and do that. Um, so let me just go ahead and just drop a few of these into here. Don't really need a whole lot in each one. I uh, just got to make sure we have one in at least one in every one of them. There we go. And I think we're good. Yeah, sweet. All right, so the way this works, we put iron blocks down, but not right there. We put iron blocks right here, and we had to move these signs because we can't have anything like signs or torches in the way. Um, so we have to just basically stack the golems like this. This top one does take like half a second worth of damage up there, but I'm not really too concerned about that. Uh, as long as we can still get the uh, golems mostly, mostly healthy there. So there we go, just like that. So now this is going to spawn six golems at the press of a button. So we've tripled our output of golems uh, with a single button press. So I think these guys are pretty much ready. I think what we're going to do with these guys, we're going to make this like a headless horseman battle. So I put pumpkins on their heads instead of helmets. Uh, that'll prevent them from, from burning in daylight. But uh, it also should have a pretty cool effect if we can splash them with some invisibility potions. Yeah, so now we can't see their... Their, uh... <laughs> Yeah, their bodies, so let's just make sure we try and get most of them, if not all of them. I think that's, I think that's all of them. Then we throw one more, one more in the back. There we go. Okay, that's good. So it's going to be six golems versus, or no, sorry, not, not six golems. Yeah, six golems against 25 invisible, or partially invisible zombies. So this is the Headless Horseman battle right here. Um, so I've already written it down in the, uh, the battle log. Let's just go ahead and spawn in these golems here like that and you should see boom there we go there's our golems I'm gonna go ahead and open their gate right now so they'll start to wander out and yeah guys place your bets 25 invisible zombies against six golems who do you think is gonna win my bet is on the zombies but that's just me that's just me um, so this battle is gonna start in three two one go. Alright, here we go. It's a pretty big force. Some of the invisibility is already worn off on them. And one guy is actually tracking me instead of, uh, instead of the golems. But, yep, looks like the zombies are taking them on full force this time. Alright, people being thrown in the air. Golems, I think one golem's down already. I guess we got five golems left, four golems left. Oh man, this is not even going to be a battle. Zombies are absolutely dominating. Absolutely dominating. Wow. We gotta put some more golems in there against this many zombies. <laughs> yeah, the zombies really do, do do well in group attacks, I gotta say. So yeah, they got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 golems, 18 zombies left. No contest. Dang, that's insane. Alright guys, so I took out all the other zombies here, and the zombies absolutely dominated that battle. 18 remaining is just insane. So yeah, we got the fireworks going on there. Very nice. All right. I also changed the banners. So now the zombies are up 8-6 over the golems. I honestly thought that would be a little closer. Uh, usually there's a ratio of like one to like one golem for every every three or four uh, zombies that is ideal. But in bigger groups, I think it's more like one to two. So next episode we might do like 12 golems versus like 25 zombies and see how that goes. Um, but yeah, I'm very happy we have the new. Uh, system in place here so we can spawn more more golems with a single button press. That's going to be really useful. But 
Uh, now I think we're going to go out to Zera Zera and work a little bit on the balloon repair station out there. So I'll meet you guys back out there. All right, so let's go ahead and get on out to Zera Zera and take a look what we got for this balloon repair station. I've actually already started to build it. Uh, we started to build it during a live stream on Thursday. And I'll provide a link to the description if you want to see us building this first part of it. Um, yeah, it was a pretty fun, pretty fun stream. Had quite a few people show up, so uh, check that out. Link in the description. But this is it right here. This is what we got done so far. Uh, so you can see this banner here. This is sort of like the unofficial banner of the <laughs> balloon repair sh station. I planted this down quite a while ago. And so this is uh, one of four buildings we're going to for sure put in this section. So we have the balloon repair station. Uh, we have the... Let me get the sheet out here. Uh, balloon repair station, firework factory, uh, dog houses, and shepherd home. It goes in this section. Uh, so, yeah, I'll show you the map here. So the brown section is right there on the right-hand side of this map. Uh, so you get, get a sort of a feel where we're at. And, yeah, basically what, what I'm thinking for this is we have a little path coming from this main road here. So the path will lead up here to the, the door. This door will lead inside to, like, an enclosed building here. And I picture this is sort of like the waiting room. So you wait for your balloons to be repaired. And then similar to, like, how some airports have, like, you know, different terminal wings... We got like these little wings here coming out, and yeah, these will basically lead you to where your balloon is being repaired, and then you can just simply walk down onto like a like a grassy area here, and the balloons will be sort of laid out here, being repaired, and so we're going to have two sort of s slots on each uh, wing, on each side of each wing, so we'll have two here, we'll have two slots over here, so we got to clear out a little bit of area over there, by the way. Um, this here will be like a little shed area, like where, where you get like supplies and stuff. Uh, this will actually be a door here that leads back up to the main, the main area here. And then we'll have an identical wing to this. We'll have that uh, same style of wing over here. And we'll have the same thing, two, two slots here and then two slots on the outside here. So that's what I'm thinking for the balloon repair station. I think it should be pretty cool. And then we'll have like a big window right here. At least that's, that's what I'm planning right now. Um, so, I think that sort of outlines what I am hoping to do with this. Um, so, I'm going to go ahead and, yeah, get building, and I'll be back once I've made some progress. Alright, so, so far we got a pretty significant portion of this done here. Uh, let me just show you exactly how this, this, this pattern goes. So, basically, we just have a bunch of upside-down dark oak wood stairs that go along in a pattern like this, uh, down to that point there. And once it gets to here, around these pillars, we have like a little special thing. So it goes something like like that to sort of give some depth to the area around the pillar, like it's being supported a little bit. And then we just continue on with the upside down stairs, just like this, till we get to the next pillar, which is right here. At which point we just do this once again, right here. And then just continue on with the upside down stairs. Uh, you see I do have to do a little bit of terraforming here, so I've been filling in a little bit of sand. Uh, at this point here, because this this side is going to be significantly higher than this other side, so we got to sort of fortify some sand right here. So I've been doing that a little bit. Uh, the rest of this is, is very straightforward. So the rest of this, you just basically take some oak wood planks and you just come along here like this, filling in the sort of the boardwalk, the main throwaway, the main walkway right here. You just fill this in all the way down like that. And then for the top bit, uh, the top bit's pretty straightforward. You can sort of see the pattern right here. Uh, it's just sort of like half uh, half slab increments. So you just go up one on each side, and then that you just bring this all the way over like this and like this, and then it just goes right over top of the uh, the oak wood, dark oak wood logs. So that's that. And then of course you put the uh, the fence on the side here. Uh, so here we're going to go one, two, three, one, two, three on this side, and then right here, where we come down to the actual area, uh, we'll go ahead and place some stairs like that. Or actually, you know what? We'll go ahead and do this. We'll go ahead and do, yeah, we'll go ahead and do full dark oak blocks here instead. And then, yeah, stairs just like that. So that's that's pretty cool. So that's how we're doing that. Um, so here we'll do the same thing, just three blocks, one, two, three, and then the stairs like that, and then fence like that.
And that's basically all there is to it. So right here, this is all going to be fence. And this is all also going to be fence as well. So that is how we are making this section here, guys. So I just wanted to let you guys know. And also, like I said, we have to fill in a bunch of sand here because we want to make this pretty much pretty much level uh, with this, this level right here. So we got to fill in a bunch of sand over here. So I'll continue on here, and yeah, I'll be back with another update. Okay, everybody, so I'm just finishing up some of the terraforming here. And what I did is I basically flattened this area out. Uh, so it has, you know, only one block uh, drop from this wing here. I also filled out a lot of filled in a lot of sand right here. And then over on this side, I added let's see if we can get over there. Added the retaining wall here with the iron blocks. Uh, added onto it, I should say. And actually we need a little bit more right there as well. Perfect. And then over here, I went ahead and moved back this hill a little bit, so we have room to work uh, here and put some some uh, spaces here for the balloons. But uh, right now, uh, what I want to do for the ground here is this. So I want to make it like a little bit of a varied ground, so like they sort of maintain it, but sort of don't. And I'd also like it to sort of taper off, so it basically starts out like they maintain this the most down here, and then it tapers off over here a little bit. So that's why it sort of... We have more grass and stuff down there than out over on this section. Um, so, that's what we're going to do now. So I got some podzol and some grass and some dirt. So we're just going to go around filling in some stuff here. And yeah, I've already dug out some spots here for this. So we'll just go around doing something like this. Filling in some uh, podzol, dirt, and grass at various spots around here. So, yeah, I'll do this and then I'll be back. Alright guys, so as you can see, we got all the land here terraformed, we got all this done, all this done here, and you can see how we're sort of separating into two sort of slots for the balloons. Um, so the smaller ones will go here, the bigger ones there. We also got this side done, so this side here, we terraformed it, just like so. And in case you're wondering what these things are, these actually show the furthest extent of the village that is uh, underground at the villager trading center there. Uh, and then we also got the far one done here. So this one here. Also terraformed it. Um, so yeah, we're looking good here. Looking very good. And I want to hold off on putting the balloons down for now because I think before we do that we should actually build up this room here. So I think we'll go ahead and make the the path here. I uh, will just sort of extend this. So we'll extend the, the roads in Zara Zara. So we'll use stone brick, cracked stone brick, upside down uh, sandstone stairs. Uh, so that'll be the path we have going on here. Coming into here, I think we should have this made out of dark oak wood. Like this. So I think that we should have something like this here. Perhaps. Like that. Just sort of keep them with the theme of the, uh, yeah, the, the wings here. And then like I said, we'll have like a big stained glass window here of some type. Um, so I think it's a pretty good plan. And I think we might also do well if we had um, like uh, pressure plates here with fence gates. So we might try that too. But I'm going to go ahead and build this up here, guys. And I'll be back once we have this building done. Okay, everyone. So I got the main building done here at the balloon repair station. So let's take a look. So obviously we got the stained glass, the red stained glass windows. And we got a kind of unique roof. Let me just uh, tower up and show you. So this roof is like a combination of slabs, stairs and uh, some different stairs rotated in different orientations. So we got yellow stained clay, green stained clay, and I think we also have orange and red on the other side. Uh, and you can see that from the inside here. Um, so that's what it looks like from the outside. We got the cobblestone uh, wall here with the torch on it as well, and some glowstone up top providing some light. Uh, come inside here is what it looks like on the inside. See we got the balloon banners of all sorts of different colors. So I made some of those up with this. Uh, we got some storage space here. We got, you know, a little waiting area so you can wait for your um, yeah, wait for your balloon to be repaired, I guess. <laughs> uh, so we got that. I think I also want to put let's see, do we have any more wood here? Uh, let's see. Wood. Yep. Okay. Wood here. And I think somebody suggested that we do something like this so we can get some boats here. Maybe get two boats. And we can actually rename these into baskets. So I think we might do that. Let me just craft up an anvil here. 
Yeah, I'll just craft up an anvil here. Uh, so, let's go in here and do that. Got inventory problems, of course. Toss that in there, there we go. Alright, so, our anvil, gonna go right here. There we go. Let's get that going on, okay. So our anvil, put that down, we'll name this into a basket. Because <laughs> this is really the only item that resembles a basket. We'll do the same thing for this. Basket. Boom, and we can put these, I guess, on the sides here. Could look alright. Baskets. Boom, there's one. And balloon basket two right there. Sweet. Okay. Good deal. So there's that. So this is the interior here. Uh, and then down down this direction, there's, yeah, just the same red carpet here. This leads to the outside over here. Uh, and this is what it looks like from the front. If I get up over here, uh, you can see sort of what it looks like from this direction. And I think it looks okay. Probably not the uh, the best looking thing in the world, but not the worst either. I think it looks decent. Uh, flows with the yeah the two wings, the two sides pretty well. I I feel. Uh, I also added these 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 white stained glass panes here, and we have gray stained glass for the back uh, the back wall or the back window I should say. Um, so now it's time to actually do this portion right here. So this is going to be like the little maintenance uh, garage right here. So what we got to do is we just got to dig all this sand out here. And I think this is going to end up being like three tall or so inside of here. And it's going to be kind of spacious. Um, so yeah, I'll go ahead and put down some stuff in here. Uh, and then, yeah, we'll see what that looks like. Alright everyone, so we got the garage done now. So here we have it. Uh, you can take a look on the inside there. Looks pretty nifty. So let's go ahead and get on in there. So you see we have a gate here. And you'll see these birch fences are connected to the birch fences, and the nether brick fences are connected to the nether brick fences. But, if I hit this stone button, some magic will happen. So you see some pistons come down, they push the fences down, and yeah, then we can simply just walk right on through. Um, so this is actually a pretty cool little mechanism here. Um, this actually does not work on a T-flip-flop, so you see if I hit this stone button again, it just goes right back to open. And the only way you can close it is by hitting this wood button. So if I hit the wood button, then it closes. So, yeah, basically we have a system that differentiates between the length of the button press. So there's a difference between the wooden and the stone button. And that basically allows you to uh, open and close the, uh, the gate as you wish. So you see here it's closed. If I hit the wood button again, nothing happens, but the stone button will open it. So that's pretty cool. Uh, let's just go ahead and close it for right now. Uh, we'll take a look at what else is in this garage. So I tried to put stuff in here that would make sense for like a balloon repair garage type thing. So we got some stained clay here that uh, obviously will make up part of the balloons we'll put out there. Uh, we got some ladders here. Uh, we got a piston here so that would help them move stuff I guess. Uh, we got some wood here that would help you know make the basket. Uh, we got some gravel so we can make uh, flint which you need, you know, lighter to, uh, <laughs> uh, flint and steel to make, uh, fire. So that's what that's for. Here we have the balloon catcher. So the idea would be you use fishing rods to sort of hook the balloon and then bring it down and tie it in. Uh, so that's the idea there. Uh, we got a lighter, of course. We got a clock, uh, because this would be, like, somewhere where they'd work, so they want to know when they're getting off work, you know. Uh, balloon repair tool right there. It's a flint renamed. A basket is just a boat renamed again. Here we have a lift test. Pretty straightforward, just a piston. <laughs> uh, here we have a lighter test. This actually tests a lighter and then it goes off after a little bit of time. So that tests your flint and steel <laughs> right there. Uh, and then of course we have more stained clay um, if we want to make more balloons. So that is the garage for the balloon repair station. I think it's pretty good. I really like this door. It's a really cool door. Um, so yeah. That is that. Um, also, I want to make some uh, changes based on some viewer suggestions today. So I already did that. I already put some um, some clocks in the school so that, uh, yeah, we have... That, that was one of the most requested features from the, uh, the school episode. Um, so I did that. Put some clocks and item frames, put them in the school. 
And also with this bathroom up here at our house, I want to change a couple things up here. So we'll get on up here. And what we need, we need an iron trap door, which we got in here. Perfect. And then we're going to need a, let's see, item frame. We'll need a stone button. Do we have a stone button? Yep, we got a stone button. And then we need a piece of white wool, uh, which we can craft up with four strings. So we'll just do this real quick. Right there, wool. Okay. And we're going to rename this white wool. going to rename it to toilet <laughs> paper. There we go. Toilet paper. And we'll come up to the bathroom here. And a lot of you guys suggested that we replace this uh, wooden, this wooden trap door with a iron trap door. And also, we should also get a, a bottle here. Or a, uh, what do you call it? Empty bottle. Yep, empty bottle. And we're going to take out a little bit of this water in here too. That was another suggestion. So we'll take this out like that. Okay, that's better. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and put this right there. And then we'll make our little toilet paper right here. So we'll have this. And then this. And then that. Toilet paper. There we go. A little toilet paper roll. <laughs> Sweet. All right, cool. So that's much better. Makes the bathroom a little bit better. And let's go ahead and head on down to the mine shaft now. And we're going to see who today's highlighted channel is. All right, so welcome to the mine shaft. And today's highlighted channel is David Snyder. And David last time suggested that we add the toilet paper, which we just added to the bathroom in our house. So thanks for the idea, David. This is your mind shaft. Let's see how you do against the other competitors. So I finished digging out David's mine shaft, and we got the following resources. So a little bit of redstone, which is nice, but unfortunately no diamonds. However, uh, what we're going to do today is actually go ahead and give out some awards for the mine shafts. Um, so first place uh, for this batch of mine shafts goes to Kobe Sabroni with 17. Second place is actually a tie between Connor Irwin and Cade Fisher with 13 apiece. So, what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and get our block of diamond out and our block of gold out, uh, which I brought down. I also went ahead and immortalized the top 10 uh, people here uh, from this mine shaft. So, those guys will stay in this book, which will go in the, uh, the library at our house. Uh, so, we got to look for these guys. we got to look for Kobe Sabroni, Connor Irwin, and Cade Fisher, because we got to put down special blocks here for them uh, so congratulations guys you guys are the top mine shafts uh, I don't know what happened here did I miss one I missed one apparently <laughs> wow okay anyway let's let's see if we can find these blue squirtle legend Knight gamer let's see camera Connor Irwin let's see he got second yep so we'll go ahead and just cut down this give him a gold block Right there. Connor Irwin, congrats. Let's see if we can find some of the other ones here. Sakos, Cage Fisher, here we go. Cage Fisher also had a second place finish. Congrats. Whoop, Cage Fisher. I think that's how you spell it. All right, there we go. And... Last guy, Kobe Sabroni. We've got to find that one. Right here. Here we go. Diamond. The top mine shaft right here. 17 diamonds. Kobe Sabroni. Okay. So, there we go. Again, I have to get the doors up here. But uh, congratulations to everybody who placed in this batch of mine shafts. Uh, because now, we are actually going to... I'm going to take this cart. We're going to clear it. And... Yeah, keep uh, suggesting things, guys, and you might get a mine shaft down here. And last but not least, guys, I want to take a look at the map of Zerzera. So here's what it looks like prior to putting in the balloon repair station. And here's what it looks like after. So we got this whole big building here, the main building right there, the two wings coming out here and there, and then, of course, the path leading over right there. 
So guys, uh, next time I think we'll put down a balloon or two out here. So like we'll have some balloons being repaired out there. But that's it for me today. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Cub. Goodbye.